Support by Total Energies. 70 years of innovation and lubricants for all types of engines. In this week's episode, we advise a viewer who's interested in purchasing a 2006 Toyota RAN. SUVs from Mahindra, Mazda and Volvo, they go head to head. And we advise a viewer who already wants to upgrade his 8 month old vehicle. Hello and welcome to Buyer's Guide, the show that is dedicated to providing you with invaluable guidance when it comes to buying, selling or maintaining a vehicle. Now joining us in studio this week to help answer some of those tricky automotive questions are Dylan Makiba from Nzanzi Petrol Heads and Mike Bradshaw from Top Gear Auto. Guys, welcome hello, back. You've been hello. here before. Yes. Good to see you back again. Nice to be back. See you too. Thank you very welcome, much. Welcome, guys. If you have a question for the team, you can send it to Buyer's Guide at ignitiontv.co.za or you can pop us a DM on Instagram at Ignition TV. And please give us as much information as possible, including a pretty pic of yourself. All right, gentlemen, let's just get into our first question. It comes from Dwayne. He's considering purchasing a 2006 Toyota Run X 1.6 with 260,000 kilometers on the clock for 90,000 Rand. He is aware of Toyota's reputation for reliability and he's seeking advice on whether this is a good buy. He'll be using the vehicle for the daily drive and he's also open to other suggestions around the same price range. Mike, you in the game, tell me about the Run-X. Tell me what I don't know about the Run-X. <laughs> There's nothing much to, to tell. They're bulletproof, they're fantastic motor cars, uh, they're cheap to keep on the road. And if that mileage is legitimate, oh. 260,000 Ks, it'll do another four or 500 quite, quite comfortably. But is it worth 90,000 Rand? It's worth 90,000 Rand. Yes. I wouldn't pay that. <laughs> would you pay that? Perfectly. Like, I would really, really, really do that because this is a very bulletproof car, as you guys have said. Um, there's nothing really to switch it up with. Run X is a very reliable car, mm -hmm. works really well. And I think for 90,000 Rand, it's a steal. Get mm -hmm. it? Yeah, that's the operative word. Steel. <laughs> it's a highly sought after car. Yes. Finding one. S finding one. And if he's found one with that mileage, which is genuine, and he, you know, if someone's w willing to let him have it, it's a great price. Mm -hmm. But he just needs to take all the precautions surrounding this vehicle. Yeah. yeah. Gorilla lock, gear lock. Gear lock. Any lock you can Otherwise, add. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Everything. Otherwise uh, if he's patient and he looks carefully, look for a Jazz or a Ballard. Yeah. Honda yes. Jazz or a Honda Ballard. They're not on the radar to get stolen and they'll give you trouble-free motoring just as, just as uh, um, efficiently as the Run-X. So 260,000 kilometers for a 2006 car for 90,000 Rand. <coughs> for me, that would have to be like in immaculate condition. You, you, Everything. Know, what the, you know what the problem with these cars is, is the, the really bad sewer rats out there. Now let me explain. 260,000 kilometers, if it's legitimate, mm -hmm is not a hell of a lot for that car. Yes. So how but do the problem with these cars is because these bad sewer rats know this, they will clock them. Yeah. So and you would be you buying that, a what car. What do you mean by clocking them? It will go to the fountain of youth. They'll spin that clock backwards. Oh, back. <laughs> so <laughs> what you're saying is, way back. How, do you, how do you verify the mileage then? Well, hopefully it's got a full service history. traceable service oh, history. Oh. So it doesn't necessarily all have to be with Toyota. Yeah. But the service history needs to be traced. And every service center that is RMI approved under, uh, as far as I know, would have a record of that yeah. service. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and you'd be able to phone and, 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 and verify that. And if that is the case, buy this car. I would say in most cases, remember you can't really look at an engine and guess its life. Yeah. I think things like the bodywork, the interior, look at how they are, uh, are what the condition they are in. And I think that can give you a sort of an idea if this is a really a good buy or not. As much as that can be refurbished and all that, but that should give you a start to see if this is a really a you good You know buy. what I'd do? I'd take it to one of those centers, pay my 500 or 700 rand, and put it through a roadworthy test before I pay for the car. Let them tell me, hey, this is not right, that's not right, this needs to get done. And they have a, an idea or thereabouts mm -hmm. about the kind of mileage the and the wear and tear on a vehicle. So they can give you a pretty good idea as to whether it's 260 or 400,000. So, so basically, what guys are saying is it's, it's worthwhile to look at, but like Segi quite rightly says, get it checked out. Okay, 
Now we're going to move on to Sia Bongo, who has a budget of 200,000 Rand, and he wants to upgrade from his Mazda 323. Now that's an old one. He prioritizes a bulletproof vehicle with low maintenance and readily available spare parts for long distance travel. His friend is selling a 2011 Ford Focus for 100,000 Rand. However, he's worried about its high mileage. Is the Ford a good used buy, he wants to know? And he's open to other suggestions, but he's not interested in the Suzuki Swift. Now, his Ford Focus is a 1.4 liter with 200,000 Ks on it. Dylan, what do you think of that? I would really scratch the Focus off. Sorry for that. Um, and doing some research, I found a nice 2015 Corolla 1.6 pre-stage auto. I think that's a car that will take him as the bulletproof that he wants yeah. uh, for the long run. With the Ford Focus, um, I don't really don't know much about the reliability of the vehicle, but I just feel like it's too much of an old vehicle for you to try and say you want to continue as the way he wants to continue with it. So something like the Toyota that I suggested, um, it's around 125,000 rands. So just add that bit more to your budget yeah, and you'll save yourself. You've got a 200,000 rand budget. Mike, 200,000 rand buys you a lot more than an uh, old Ford Focus. Mm. But why doesn't he, he could look at a 2022 Toyota Starlet with the yeah. new generation engine and the touch screen. That's 200 grand. Yeah, so that's much, um, much that Guys, that's I just I need to mention here, he's looking for a Toyota with a different badge <laughs> due to the theft and hijacking. And no. you spot on. You yeah. look at the Suzuki Starlet. The <laughs> Suzuki Starlet, yes, of course. You spot on. What he was I thinking? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Otherwise, um, a Hyundai R20? Yes, there's, there's another so brilliant beautiful. option. Yeah. Very, very nice. Yeah. Nice car, also under the radar. So Kia Rio is what I put on my Definitely. list here. Toyota Etios, if you want an et Etios. Oh, lovely car. Yeah, which is a good car. Even the Polo Viva, although those, those two cars would, you know, in terms of their theft risk, is a bit high. Hyundai Accent, also. You know, you can get a basic 1.6 Hyundai Accent. It's a very nice car to drive, generally quite reliable. And, and, as, and as Mike also suggested, you know, something like a Toyota um, Starlet. Starlet, also very nice. So have a look at those as well. But remember, you're buying a car with, with 200,000 kilometers on it, and you want to keep it for a couple of years. In a couple of years, in, in five years, that's 300,000 kilometers, and it's, it's, it's finished. Naked, yeah. it's right. you know, like, like Mike said in the previous question, 260,000 kilometers on a Toyota, you can do another 400. My friend, it's a different badge. <laughs> it's a different badge. <laughs> it's a different badge. There we go. Yes. So, I mean... No, I wouldn't suggest that. I think we're all in, in agreement that the, f mm. the Focus, although it's not a bad car, um, it would be a better buy to spend a little bit more, get something with a lot less mileage on it so that you can drive it for the next, say, 10 years. Because if, if you're driving a Mazda 3 to 3 at present time, you've been driving it for a long time. Oh, Mike, I wasn't saying you should go for the Focus. I'm saying this, the Starlet and things you guys are mentioning, whatever mileage is on there, you should buy it. Because like hard. you mentioned... Oh. The Toyota is indestructible, yeah. practically. Well, it'll be under 100,000 case. Yeah, Yeah, at 200,000 Rand, absolutely. Definitely. Okay. Stay tuned, because after the break, SUVs from Mahindra, Mazda, and Volvo go head to head. And we search for a low-mileage 4x4 Bucky under half a million Rand. Welcome back to Buyer's Guide. Our next question comes from Isaac, and he currently drives a 2016 Mercedes-Benz A200 AMG Sportline with about 107,000 k's on the clock. The car's a full service history and has an oil change every 10,000 kilometers, which is very good. However, the car is now out of its maintenance plan, and Isaac is considering selling the car and purchasing easy one of the following, a 2023 Mahindra XUV 700, a 2022 or 2023 Mazda CX-5 or a 2018-2019 Volvo XC40. Which one would be the best buy? Let's start with Dylan. What do you think of those? Um, ones, um, I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to go extend your motor plan. It is such a very, very good vehicle and it has all the right things on it. But if he's really looking to sell the vehicle, man, um, I'm a big Volvo fan. He can get himself an XC40 R design. Very good car, I feel. Um, the my Mahindra XUV 700. It's a more modern car. I've had it on test quite a few times, but it's one thing with this, all these new cars. The technology sometimes comes into 
uh, question, you know, over the longevity of if it would really last like the other vehicles. To match technology. Yes, that's, that's one big, big, big uh, issue. And then we have the Mazda CX-5, which it's a very basic, good vehicle to buy. Just get one of the latest ones, top spec, with that nice Bose sound system, and you'll be happy. Mm. So shop around, whatever you like, between those three, you can get it. Mike, in terms of extending the warranty on his, on his Mercedes, it's doable? It, it's not cost effective. Mm. So it costs too much to actually yeah. say, I'll give you like two years and say it's 50,000 Rand as an example, and you look at it and say it's not worth it. Well, he services it every 10,000, you might get, you might get two and a half services. And if you were servicing it at an RMI dealer or a Mercedes-Benz aftermarket specialist, perhaps not at the OEM, yeah. the services are negligible. Mm. Yeah. So if that is the case, keep the car. But it's an A200 and he's looking at SUVs. So I have a sense that this gentleman wants something bigger. Wants something bigger yeah. What would you suggest out of those three? Them? So, so the Mahindra would be last. Yeah. Completely, <laughs> uh, I wouldn't touch it. Uh, not that they are bad cars, but if you need a part, Good luck. Yes. Yes. Good luck. There's a bit of a okay. Yeah. Um, the Volvo XC40, funny enough, sorry, would be the last of my choice because they are exceptionally expensive to maintain, maintain, even if you do take it to an aftermarket and not the OEM. The Mazda CX-5 would be my first choice in his choice, but if it was my money, I'd either go for the Suzuki Franx or a Honda Elevate. Same yeah. money. And well it would be a 2024 with five years, Maintenance, 100,000 kilowatts. My concern with those two cars would be, although they are great cars, they're just basic 1500s. So now you've come from an A200 AMG, mm. which is, let's face it, it's a flashy car. Yes. You want something mm. with a bit more Vuma. So that's why I would go with the, the CX-5, because the CX-5 has a bit more power mm. than, than those other cars. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, if your budget is, like, a, a, like you mentioned, an Elevate or a... Um, one of, the, one of the other cars in that sort of bracket, that's like 430,000 Rand. For that kind of money, you can get some a really good CX-5. You know, maybe, maybe it's only a year old with 10,000 Ks on it, and they come with good warranties and service plans and that. Mm. So the CX-5 is also a premium car inside. You know, it really does feel where the Honda Elevate, great car, but it's a bit plasticky Basic, yeah. and, and it's a bit cheap, you know? You know, Isaac should actually have told us whether he wants to get out of his uh, his car choices, maybe because of his budget, not because he wa he wants to get out of his A two hundred. Yeah, well, look, the you know, so it sounds like for, as far as I'm it's concerned, mm. he should just keep the A two hundred. That's his first option. Buy maybe an aftermarket uh, plan, yeah. an aftermarket maintenance plan with that kind of service history. They'll be more than happy to sell him one. And it's, it's and keep the A two hundred. But my next choice would be the CX five. Neither of the other two, neither <laughs> of them. CX-5, definitely. So, you know, those are my two so choices. We're, we're actually in agreement. Yeah. This is yeah. unusual. Go and buy a CX-5. Very unusual. <laughs> yeah. 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 Here we go. It's a simple thing. Sell your Merc, go buy a CX-5. Don't sell it. Or don't sell your Merc. <laughs> Kelvin is looking for a demo or low kilometer 4x4 bucky suitable for long distances and rough terrains. With a budget of around 500,000 Rand, he is considering a Toyota Hilux Raider or Legend an Isuzu D-Max 3-litre or a Toyota Land Cruiser Bucky. The vehicle will be financed over 72 months and he needs an economical option in terms of maintenance and fuel consumption. I know what my two choices are, Mike, out of that, <laughs> but uh, what would be yours <laughs> if, if you're going to have to choose from those three? I like the Isuzu. Mm -hmm. it's, there's nothing wrong with the, the Hilux Raider. It's just you know, if I'm going to be driving a car, I don't want a target on my head. And I know we always <laughs> go back to yes to this. And, I, and I, I'm really not speaking badly about Toyota in any way. But even with, within our dealership, certain Toyotas, we do not park them in our display bay. Yes. <laughs> uh, unless they are under lock and key. Because we've had two Prados taken from us. So if you want a, <laughs> a target on your head, that Hilux Raider legend is the best is one. Highly desirable. Highly desirable. <coughs> Everybody wants it. Yeah. People correct. want it because of its reliability. But if and you want to steal it, correct. <laughs> if you want to go to the, the shops and come out and know that your car is there, then the Suzu D Max is, is definitely my choice or a, or a Mitsubishi Triton. Triton. Yeah. You know, the Triton this is very yeah. underrated. This yeah. is how I answered this question. This is exactly how I answered this question. He says, which would be the best buy? Either of the Toyotas would be the best buy, but if you want a yes. safe, you want a safe buy, Isuzu. you'd go with the Isuzu. Uh, definitely uh, go with the Isuzu. For what me, do you think about something like a, um, 
the, the new Chinese buckies that, that have come out? Ah, no. Like Jack, uh, J-A-C, no, something along no, those lines? No, 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 no. I, I, not, not to badmouth any of their brands, um, not in any kind of bad way. But one thing, uh, you don't want to be a test subject. These yeah. buckies haven't been in the market for a period of time where you can say you know over the five-year or ten-year period of time how the cars would be reacting. Yeah. So how about the P-Series, Dylan? Technology is there. But uh, do you know why Elan Pusa has, been has, been has had the winning formula for so long? The more minimal it is, the better. The yeah. more you start putting in too many touch screens, too many sensors, too many everything else, it becomes a problem. So hence, in this part, I did say no to Land Cruiser. Very good, reliable car. Do so you want to drive a Land Cruiser bucket every day? No, it's a trial. No. It's, it's uncomfortable. It's very, it's very uncomfortable. terrible to yes. drive every day. It's fantastic for what it's designed for, and but that's designed for to work on the farm. Yes. But so when you want to drive it to the farm, day. you need something else. <laughs> so I'm with Mike here. The, Isu the, the Isuzu I Same is, is great. Yeah. And another one I would throw in there as well would be the Nissan Navara. 2.5 turbo diesel engine, been around for a long time. Very low risk in terms of theft, and uh, it's good value for money. Yeah. So either the Isuzu, Nissan Navara, have a look at that. The, the Toyota Hilux, there's no dispute that it is most probably the best bucky, but the criminals know that as well. Mm -hmm. So if you're prepared to take that risk, then you buy yourself a Hilux. If you don't want to, there's some other options there to have a look at. I Land, Land Cruiser Bucky, mm -hmm. just for me, is, yeah. is not an everyday vehicle. It's, it's, it's for farmers. They're going to use it on their farm, or you're going to go hunting it or whatever. You don't want to have to drive somewhere with it. I like uh, Mike's suggestion of the Triton. The Triton's the also, yeah. also very, very, very good. Bike. And the Triton at the present time, you may be able to get some decent deals yeah. on them because there's new one coming out. Uh, I think it's either Mike, do you know the end of the year or next year sometime? As far as I know, towards the end of the year. Yeah. Towards the end of the year, yeah. Okay, so we'll be taking a short break, but when we return, we find out whether a 10-year-old BMW 5 Series or Range Rover Evoque is a good use buy. And we advise a viewer who already wants to upgrade his eight-month-old vehicle. Welcome back to Buyer's Guide. Laurel is considering a second-hand 2015 BMW 520D with over 180,000 kilometers and a full service history. She also would like to know if a 2014 Range Rover Evoque with a full service history is advisable for long-term use. She seeks advice on which vehicle would be a better investment in terms of durability, running costs and overall value for money for extended ownership. Mike, I think this is a very really good question in that you've chosen two cars that I would say well, one of them I'd definitely go for but the second one it's uh, actually unusual because uh, generally people don't put in a, a sedan SUV with an SUV with yes. a, uh, uh, an SUV so I've got to look at it maybe objectively as a as a used car salesman here if I put an Evoque next to a 520 diesel similar price similar mileage the Evoque will sell quicker than the 520 diesel mm -hmm. that is fact would I buy uh, the 520 over the Evoke? Evoke? Yes. Yes, absolutely. That, that 520 diesel, I've never had any issues with them. But in saying that, the Range Rover Evoke diesel engine is remarkable as well. The problem with it is the little niggly tzatzkas. Uh -huh. Central locking. Yes. Window winder mechanisms. Uh -huh. All the little things that, that, that are wear and tear that cost an absolute flipping fortune. Yeah. Whereas the BM is just plug in and play. Now, Dwayne, I'm looking at this and saying, you, you're buying, let's say they're both roughly 10-year-old Car. premium cars. Wouldn't it be better just to take that budget, and because uh, he didn't say what the budget was here, and buy something newer, less fa fancy? Because so what these cars are expensive. So sorry, Dylan. Time. Mike, what would the numbers be on these cars? Uh, well, the numbers on a 2015 or a 2016 uh, Evoque are roughly about between 300 and 340,000. Yeah. Right? Sorry, Dylan. So I was actually about to say that um, I went and stretched both of the vehicles. My range is about 350 to 400,000 rands yeah. on, on, on either of the vehicles. And I agree with Mike totally. The Evoque, in some instances, for a lady, it's a very good looking car. I really agree with the lady. But um, I know a friend who still has the 520D and they are running on close to 400,000 kilometers yeah. on the vehicle yeah. and it's mm -hmm. still moving. So on the Evoque, I'll come back on the terms of the small things about technology, those small things that break apart and I would really disregard it just for that. But 520 is a very good car, get it. It, it is, I must say, I like the, the, the two liter diesel engine. 180,000 kilometers, remember you, you're at the sort of 
manufacturer's life expectancy is around there. You know, so if you get more out of it, that's cool. But this is when cars start to cost a lot of money. I would rather, if it was my money, and like you're talking in the 350,000, 400,000 Rand mark, I would rather buy something that's newer, that would come with a sort of warranty. I mean, Mike, in terms of um, like a, a 320 diesel, newer version, with that sort of budget of 350, you're going to get something that's probably still in warranty. Would I be correct? No, no. But, it, but it'll be about 100,000 Ks yeah. or 110,000 Ks. Yeah, and and the you're most probably going to get a much newer vehicle as well. Yeah, you would. Yeah, if, 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 yeah, if you can find one. If I would suggest yeah. something that you can get secondhand, is I don't know if it's the B8 or B7, Audi A4, yeah. TDI. Those are cars which really they are fairly newer than these ones, yeah. and they would push you quite quite for some time. So look the, at the diesel version, definitely, yeah. not the petrol version. Not the I'll, petrol I'll, version. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit left field here. I would look at a Lexus. Because and that's you're something we don't get a lot of suggestions, yeah. but it's a premium car and it comes with fantastic warranties. It, it is fantastic. And apart from that, they never break. Yeah. Fully spec. I have okay. sold hundreds of these things out of warranty with 150,000 Ks. No problem. They don't come back. Okay. So, so there's some suggestions for you. Obviously, if you set your mind on those two vehicles, I think we're all in agreement the BMW, BMW is the to go yeah. for in terms of long term. But take, consider what we've said and consider what Mike said there about the Lexus. I think that's great advice. All right, then we're going to move on to our last question, which comes from Leonard, who bought a Suzuki Bellina GLX Auto eight months ago on finance. With his family growing, the Bellina now seems uh, a bit small. So Leonard is interested in upgrading to a Suzuki Grand Vitara GLX Auto. He's also asking when the suitable time would be to trade in his current car for a bigger one, considering it was bought only on finance eight months ago. He's also concerned about the potential downsides of making this trade-in decision. Now, Mike, we're going to go back to you because you're a dealer. Mm. So now somebody buys a vehicle, they've had it for eight months, and they want to come and sell it now. What are the pitfalls? So, well, we, we're assuming it's brand new Yeah. that he's bought this. His, what he owes and what the car is worth huh? will never match. Oh, uh -huh. It will, will definitely not match. They only start to match slowly around 18 months. Yeah. Um, and that's if he hadn't put down a deposit. If he put down a deposit, we could be there or thereabouts after eight months, but we don't know that. So 18 months, is that's should only look there. So yeah. the best thing, Dylan, is must probably just to go to a dealer and see what you get offered for the mm. car, correct? I wouldn't say that. Um, just looking at my set, two points that I have, nothing much. Just as he is saying, um, you're going to be really short on your interest. So I take you close to a year or two, two, three, to pay off your interest. And the shortfall when you're yeah. buying the new car is going to kill you. So wait for a year or two. Unfortunately, the family would have to. They would have grown even more. <laughs> been bigger then. So maybe the thing to do is to go along to the Suzuki dealer mm. and see what they're going to offer you on the Bellino and to settle your finance. You may find that the shortfall between the two is too big a financial decision to make. Um, the choices that he's making there, irrespective of the financial package, if he understands that problem and he, and he sorts that problem, I think that uh, Suzuki Grand Vitara is a lovely car. I, w I will say that, that brand loyalty means things to OEMs. Yeah. Yes. So <laughs> taking your Suzuki back to Suzuki Says and saying like, listen, this is my story. And you never know. If you've got a salesman that's switched on, he can structure a deal. Uh, there could be factory assistance, maybe not on the Vitara, but something similar where there's money on the bonnet, as they call it. Yeah. And, and that would then close the deficit of what he owes uh, the shortfall. I was just going to say, you know, you should go and talk to Suzuki. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. If you, Suzuki will definitely give him uh, we'll try and make a deal for him yeah. because he's staying in the brand. Yeah. Maybe you get a second-hand Grand Vitara. Vitara as opposed to a new one kind of thing, you know, because I, I like that Suzuki. Car. I think it's a good-looking good car. car and those mechanicals are in so many of the Suzukis and, and they're really doing well on the market and there's a reason for that because they, they're, they're priced right and their features are right and they're not filled with, like you mentioned earlier about technology, they're not filled with too much technology which is all which concerns me nowadays because we see this in a lot of new cars. And to resolve those problems, it's, oh, well, it's a software upgrade. We hear it all the time. Mm. It's a software upgrade. Up so software upgrade. <laughs> yeah, it's another software upgrade. You know, Mike, when I s always suggested that too much technology, you know what he'd say? Ah, it's under warranty. Just take it back to there. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that anymore. Upgrade. But when you get out of the warranty period, how do you do the software upgrade? It's an absolute nightmare. Yep. Okay. And with that, we've come to the end of this week's show. Thank you, Dylan and Mike, for joining us and all that useful advice. Remember, until next time, please buckle up and stay safe on the roads.
Quartz by Total Energies, driving lubricant innovation for all types of engines.